it's time to install a wideband O2 sensor on my car. I have a new engine swap, the factory tune is all over the place, so it's in dire need of a tune, and a wideband is basically the only safe way to tune an engine. I went with this NGK wideband because I like this tiny control box. I didn't really want to find room for a big 2 inch gauge pod. The kit comes with a few things, a wideband O2 sensor, a control box, wiring, and the sensor weld bung. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to my channel. The first step in this install is to calibrate the sensor to current atmospheric conditions. Go ahead and plug the O2 sensor in. These two wires are the ground and the 12 volt source for the control box. I attached my rectifier to these two wires, but you could just connect them to a battery instead. The wideband plug goes into the control box. I flipped on my rectifier and the wideband gets powered up. The O2 sensor will immediately start its heating cycle. You must wait until the sensor is fully warmed up in order to calibrate it. Once the O2 sensor is warmed up, remove the power source and wait a few seconds. Then power the unit back on. Hold down the button on the control box. If you've done this correctly, the screen should now be showing CAL. Keep pressure on the button until the screen turns to CON-P. Once that CONP shows up, you can unpress the button, and then power off the unit. And now the O2 sensor is calibrated, if you switch it back on, it will start up the cycle like it should. And now for the O2 sensor welding. Get your car up off the ground in order to access the exhaust pipes. Now where to put this O2 sensor? Ideally, you want to put the sensor in the collector as close to the engine as possible. And on an LS, you definitely want to favor the driver's side, because the driver's side usually runs a little bit leaner. Once I removed the exhaust from the car, I started drilling the hole for the O2 sensor bung. This carbide tipped hole saw gets through this very hard stainless steel. A quick prep of the hole and it's ready to weld. I chose a Vibrant 1194O2 sensor bung for this. I've used these before and I've liked them a little bit better than the other styles. Using my tick machine, I threw a fillet around the bung. And with the magic of editing, the headers are installed again. Thread the wideband O2 sensor into the bung, making sure not to twist up the wires. A medium ugga dugga and it's tight enough. Okay, so now it's time for the wiring. So these two wires are the ground and the main power for the wideband system. The sleeving is huge, so I removed the sleeving and shortened up the wires. And this is the wiring diagram. It's very simple. The two long wires are main power and ground. The two short wires are the 5 volt signal wire and signal wire ground. The signal wire is used for things like data logging. And since I can't leave things alone, I decided to sleeve the wires with some nice blade terminals. So now I have three wires. One of which is 12 volt power. The other one is the ground wire and the other one is the signal ground wire. These two wires connect to the pigtails that I made. And the two shorter wires are for the signal 5 volt and the ground. 
The next step is to find a way to route these wires into your car. I used a grommet on my HVAC delete plate, but depending on the car you're using, you might have to get a little bit creative. I ran the wires through the firewall and then to the driver's side. The O2 sensor is plugged in and the slack is pulled up. I used some zip ties to secure the wires underneath the car. And now to power the wideband. The two grounds go on my grounding bus bar. And yes, my custom car wiring got a little bit messy. Just a little bit. The 12 volt power wire goes to my positive 12 volt bus bar. To make things easier, I used a female and male blade terminals on the wires. The 5 volt signal wire is a little bit custom made as I split it from one wire into two. One of the two 5 volt signal wires goes to my Dakota digital gauges. The other 5 volt wire goes right next to my OBD2 port in case I ever need to data log wideband signals. Now to mount the wideband control box somewhere in the car. I 3D printed this holder that goes where my HVAC used to be. A quick zip tie and it's secure. It's a loose fit for now, but I'm gonna make a better mount later on. A quick fire up and the wideband is doing its job reading the air fuel ratios of my untuned, poorly running engine. My Dakota digital gauges can see the O2 sensor voltage as well. I'm still working with their tech line to see if we can convert it to a wideband ratio instead of just a voltage. And this shot shows my final 3D print that I made at a PET G. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, consider supporting me on Patreon and remember to follow me on Instagram.